Hello, this is an update to my congregations uh, in Upper Rogue and Gold Hill, and I want to uh, also mention uh, talent. There is going to be a change in my status, and so this is my official announcement to you. I've been cleared to do this by um, the hierarchy of uh, the church. Uh, John uh, has given me permission to talk about this. So um, what's going to happen is that uh, nothing will change at Gold Hill. I will continue to, uh, in the future, this is after July, and of course this will not all go into effect uh, in, in physical form until we actually start meeting together in physical form. So uh, this is uh, simply a paperwork sh shuffle at the moment, but my, my status is changing at uh, both Upper Rogue and Talent. Uh, at Upper Rogue, I will be no longer the, uh, ass the appointed pastor. I will be assigned to Upper Rogue and to Talent. Hello, Talent. Welcome to back into my flock. Um, you, uh, both of those congregations, I will be assigned to them as, a, uh, as their long-term supply. Um, I will meet with the Upper Rogue Church. This is how we used to do this. Uh, I'll meet with the Upper Road Church uh, and, and be there on the first and third Sundays of the month. And the first Sunday of the month will, all, will always be a communion Sunday. And uh, talent will, I will be at talent on the second and fourth Sunday of the month. And for you, I know this breaks with tradition of every place uh, in the Methodist Church, but your communion Sunday will be the second Sunday of every month. I am looking forward to having talent back in my flock. I'm looking forward uh, to um, being uh, part of, uh, of both of your lives uh, again and, uh, and still. And so um, I, I'm looking forward to this. Of course, uh, nothing's really going to change in, the, in, in our real world uh, until we are um, freed to uh, return uh, to our... Um, to our, uh, our meeting together, uh, our fellowship together. Which brings me to my second topic. I met with the, uh, the leadership of Gold Hill and Upper Rogue Churches uh, separately. Uh, I, wanted, I want both of those uh, meetings, I want you to know how much I uh, enjoyed and needed the... Uh, the ability to sit down together with other human beings face to face, even if we were all wearing masks, uh, to be uh, uh, in uh, in fellowship together, even even under the circumstances we are, it's just to me it felt really good because I have been so isolated uh, at home. Uh, it, it it truly felt good to me to actually be in fellowship with other people for a few minutes um, for the for these meetings where we could talk face to face. Okay, uh, during uh, these, these meetings were called together um, for uh, the most part to discuss um, what it means for a phase three opening. Phase three opening is, um, is not difficult to attain the requirements for us to do. Uh, it is. Uh, we have to need. We will need to sanitize the building um, um, fairly uh, thoroughly um, once, and then after that, we will need to uh, spot sanitize the parts of the building that were in use after each use, so that the next people who come in have come in come into a clean building. Um, we'll have to remove the hymnals from the pews and the Bibles from the pews. We will not be allowed to sing. We will need. We will be required to wear face masks while we're um, while we're attending service. While you're in the building, you have to wear a mask if you're over two years old. Um, maximum of 50 people in the congregation meeting at one time. That's not a challenge for us since we since none of my neither none of these congregations are uh, over 20 people uh, who show up at any one given time. So we meet that requirement already without too much difficulty. Uh, the ability to separate by our, you know, your six-foot um, distancing. Um, this, of course, doesn't mean that family groups have to separate. The family groups sit together, but you have to be your family group has to be six feet away from the next family group or the next person in the pew. 
And so, but then again, that's not challenging too much. We could we could do that by um, making sure that everybody t takes care of that. Uh, and again, wearing a mask in the building um, is would be a requirement. We'd be putting a hand sanitizing station up at the entrances and exits. Again, none of these are really difficult to take care of. And and as we discuss these, we know that we could take care of these pretty fairly easily. Um, I will eventually. Um, I will eventually be writing a, uh, sending a letter to John uh, Tucker, our district superintendent, letting him know um, that we are uh, that we could meet the phase three requirements if we were to um, if we were to open in a phase three way. Um, but I'm going to tell you this because this is not only what Upper Rogue told me directly, but also the feeling I got from uh, the Gold Hill meeting was that uh, meeting under Phase 3, uh, although is not difficult to physically do, what would really truly happen is that here, here's one of the things that would make it challenging, is that uh, if you're over 65, you would be... Not required to stay home, but you would be really, truly um, encouraged to stay to continue to stay home. At all three of these congregations, that means that I would be there, um, but there would only be two to five, maybe six other people in each congregation, uh, depending on the congregation. Some of them would have only two other people there. Some of them would have maybe five or six. So... Um, and also one of the other requirements under phase three is that we would not be allowed to do communion. So um, under 65 should stay home, no singing, no communion, um, no responsive readings. Anything where the congregation would speak back uh, would be kind of really discouraged. And so that makes a phase three opening a very different service than what we would be very com that I would be comfortable with, especially when when we would not be able to do singing, and could play, but we would not be able to sing, and that's that's kind of a bummer, uh, I'll be honest. And so, and the feeling I honestly got from uh, those two congregations again, I have not talked to talent about this yet. Um, I have, I have had a brief conversation with Sharon once we both were allowed to speak about this to each other. Um, but we didn't talk about this part of this. But the feeling I got from those two congregations, and what I think I know of talent, would be that you would really prefer not to start meeting again as a congregation uh, for Sunday services until um, we were into a phase four. And that's when the, the 65 and older uh, are, not, uh, are, are, um, are freer to come back. Uh, we would be able to sing again and most probably be able to start doing communion. Uh, a communion might be a little different. Um, I've been talking to a, to, um, a couple of, I, I don't remember who I've talked to. I know I've talked to at least two of the churches. Um, I might have talked to all three about uh, the idea of those little communion cups that are all packed together with a little wafer inside and they're all sealed up and we could do those I I, I know um, but we could do that probably so uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to though I am still you know there's still the hope that we could do this by uh, Father's Day by June 21st but let's probably be more realistic is that that's not going to happen yet that we will f continue to to meet um, with YouTube Sunday services and and uh, and my Wednesday classes um, for a little while longer, uh, and I so I just think that's how it's going to be. Um, so that's kind of where we are. I want I, and I wanted you to to just be aware of where we are with all of this. Um, I want you to continue to watch the Sunday services. I want you to continue to watch the Wednesday classes, those of you who are. Um, I, I have seen a very good uptick of people who are watching these things, or at least for a, while, a little while. They may not watch the whole thing. You, you may not be watching the whole thing, but you watch a little bit of it. And uh, if, if whatever you find, you find either entertaining or educational or um, comforting, 
um, well, bless you. Uh, and I hope that, um, that that's uh, a, a need in your life that I'm able to fulfill. I want you to stay safe, stay well. Shalom. Hello, everybody, and especially the uh, Nasi already. Uh, well, actually, they're difficult in one way uh, where, oh, I've got a bug crawling across the camera. Hold on just a second. You stay right there.